Good afternoon, everyone. So today we are going to discuss the periodic test of St. Kabir School. Obviously, it's math and CBSC, if that wasn't clear enough. The instructions are on the board, on the screen, actually. So section A consists of two questions, a mark, B, two questions, C, two questions, D, two questions. So basically, the easiest instructions that you can ever find on this planet. All right. So without further ado, let's start the question. First of all, obviously, there's a correction. Two numbers. Obviously, two numbers are in the ratio 3 is to 4. And their LCM is this. Then find the sum of the numbers. Now, he says two numbers are in this ratio. So, I'll consider my numbers to be 3x and 4x. Right? Now, he says their LCM is 120. Now, LCM. Let me try to write the LCM. X is here. X is here. In the lowest common multiple, I will have my X. Right? Then 3 is here. 3 has to be present. 4 is here, 4 has to be present. So that means my LCM is nothing but 12x. Alright. Now he says LCM is actually equal to 120. So that means x equal to 10. Now if x is 10, do you know the numbers? The answer is yes. The numbers are 30 and 40. Now he says find the sum. So just add them up and the answer turns out to be 70. Alright. The next question. Now he says find a cubic polynomial with the sum of its zeros, sum of the product of its zeros taken two at a time. And product of its zeros as 2 minus 7 minus 14 respectively. Alright. Now I need to write a cubic polynomial. Cubic polynomial can be written as x cube minus sum of zeros. Sum of zero into x square plus sum of product of zeros taken to at a time. Zeros taken to at a time. 2 and a time into x plus product of zero, right? So that's, let me write it. So x cube minus sum of zeros is 2. So 2x square plus minus 7 is there. So minus 7 into x plus minus 14. So, um, yeah, so minus is here, plus is here. This is actually minus product, minus product. Careful, right? Because it's alternating sign. So negative, positive, negative, right? So this becomes x cube minus 2x square minus 7x. Plus 14. This is my required cubic polynomial. So, since this is one mark, I do not need to explain it more. All right. The next part question that is, he says if 2520 is of this form, then find the value of it. Now, 2520, clearly it is written as product of time. So, that means I need to prime factorize it first. I'm sure you can do that. This actually turns out to be equal to 2 cube into 3 square into 5 into 4. Now this is equal to this. So 2 is here, 2 is here. Exponents have to be the same. That means 8 is equal to 3. 3 is here, 3 is here. Exponents have to be the same. B is equal to 2. Similarly, C is equal to 1. D is equal to 1. Just substitute it and you will get your answer as 0. Alright, moving on. He says find the greatest number of 6 digit which is exactly divisible by 24, 15 and 36. First of all let me try to understand what does he mean by exactly divisible. Now let me talk about 24. Numbers exactly divisible by 24 will look like 24, 48 and 72 and so on. Basically I am talking about the multiples right. So I will be talking about the multiples of 24, 15 and 36. Now related to multiples what do I know? Lowest common multiple? That I can easily find out. I can find out the lowest common multiple of 24, 15 and 36. Which actually turns out to be 360. Right? The next common multiple, this was the lowest one. The next common multiple would be 360. Uh, after 360, it would be 720. Then it would be 1080 and so on. Now he says find the greatest number of 6 digits. So in these multiples, I need to find the greatest 6 digit number. Right? One way is you can keep on writing and when you arrive at the six digit number, you can oh say this is the greatest one and spooked. Or hence I have found the answer. Or you can play it smart. The greatest six digit number with, uh, you know that is 9, how? 90, what, what is it? 9,99,999. Right? This is the greatest six digit number you know. Divide this by 320. Right? Because multiples you are looking for, they are nothing but the multiples of 320, uh, 360 only, right? Not 360, 360 only. 
right? When you divide it, the actually remainder, I'm sure you can do the division. I'm leaving that up to you. The remainder turns out to be 279. Now, I want the number to be divisible by 360. That means this remainder should have been 0, right? That would be 0 if I subtract 279. The number turns out to be 9997.20. In fact, this is the greatest six-digit number which is exactly divisible by 24, 15 and 36. This is the answer. Alright, moving on. Now he says pi minus root 3 is an irrational number. Prove it. So again, pi minus root 3, assume that it is a rational number. That means it can be written as the ratio of two quantities A and B, where A and B are obviously positive integers. Right? And obviously B is not equal to 0. Alright? Then I can write, since I know something about root 3, I will try to isolate it. So I can write root 3 as pi minus a, a by b. Now this is a rational number. This is a rational number. Difference of two rational numbers. Difference of two rational numbers. That is obviously rational. Right? And root 3, it's a standard thing given in your NCRD. It is irrational. Now you are saying that irrational is equal to rational, which is clearly a contradiction. Contradiction. Why? Why? Because your assumption is wrong. That means pi minus root 3 is not rational or we can say it is irrational. Alright, moving on. Now he says find the zeros of this polynomial. Now don't be scared just because root 3 is there. I do not care. Right? I will apply my usual method. So my polynomial is 4 root 3 x square plus 5 x minus 2 root 3. Now on this side, I need to think of two numbers whose sum is 5. And whose product is to a minus 2 root 3 into 4 root 3, so minus 24. Right? Now, obviously, this will not be 124. 212, no. 35, uh, 38, yes. Now, 38, I need to have one of them to be negative. Yeah, pay is sum is positive, so that means minus. Done. This um, rhythm has been split. 4 root 3 x square minus 3x plus x minus 2 root 3. Now, let me. See what I can take common from here. I can have root 3 common. Root 3 and obviously x common. So I will be left with 4x minus root 3. Plus I can take 2 common. So 4x minus root 3. Done. So 4x minus root 3. Into root 3x plus 2. So here 0 is root 3 by 4. Here 0 is minus 2 by 4. Alright, now I need to verify the relationship between zeros and coefficients. So, verification. First of all, I will find the sum of zeros on the side. Sum of zeros, which is actually root 3 by 4 plus minus 2 by root. You will take the LCM, which is 4 root 3. Then you will say 3, uh, uh, yeah, 3, that got minus 8. So, this is minus 5 by 4 root 3. Right? Then on the side, again, you will say minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. This actually also turns out to be minus 5 by 4 root 3. There is no surprise, but you have to write it like that. Now you can say from 1 and 2. From 1 and 2. Sum of zeros is equal to minus of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. This you will write for the sum. Same thing you have to do it for the product. You will find out product of zeros. Then you will find out obviously constant term divided by coefficient of x square. Then you will say from 3 and 4 we can see product of zeros is equal to constant term divided by uh, coefficient of uh, x square. Hence verified. Please find this out separately. That is how verification goes. Alright, moving on. Now he says... Given that the zeros of this polynomial are in the form this, for some real numbers a and b, right? Find the value of a and b as well as the zeros of the polynomial. Now, this is a cubic polynomial. Cubic polynomial whose one zero I can clearly see. Come on. Observation plays a very important role. I can see that minus 1 is the 0. But minus 1 is the 0, that means x plus 1 is the factor. If one of the factors is x plus 1, I can definitely write the second factor, which will turn out to be x square minus 7x plus 2. And I can factorize this easily. That is nothing but x minus 2 into x minus 5. That zeros minus 1, 2 and 5. Right? Zeros are again 
Now he says you need to find the value of a and b. So that means I need to write my 0 to minus 1, 2, 5 as a, a plus b, a plus 2. Right? Let me see. If I take my a to be minus 1, I can take b to be 3. Check whether all is satisfied. The answer is yes. That is why this is the answer and these are the zeros. Yes, you can use the relationship between uh, zeros and coefficients, but this is a nice cubic polynomial. You know the zeros of it, so don't waste your time. All right, moving on to the next question. All right, oh, we have done such a question in class already. Right, a barrel manufacturer can produce up to 300 barrels per day. The profit made from the sale of these barrels can be modeled by the function. It is nothing but the polynomial. Right, so profit is deter is dependent on the number of barrels because he says p of x is profit and x is the number of barrels. The number of barrels will change and profit will vary. Now he says based on this model, answer the following questions: When no barrels are produced, what is the profit or loss? No barrels, so that means x is actually what is equal to zero. If x equal to zero, so p of x actually becomes put zero over here, put zero over here. It becomes minus 66,000. Now, profit negative, that means actually loss is happening. Loss of how much? Rupees 66,000. Done? Now, next is what is the profit loss if 175 barrels are produced? Right? 175. So, let me write my polynomial page first. Right? So, my polynomial was P of x equal to minus 10x square plus 3500x. Minus 66,000. Now he says that 175 barrels have been produced. So that means x equal to 175. So I can find the profit. Profit is minus 10 into 175 whole square plus 3500 into 175 minus 66,000. All right. Now you just need to calculate it. Now, first of all, obviously you can take my uh, 175 common. So I'll be left with minus 10 into 175. So minus 1750. Plus 3500 minus 66,000. This is nothing but 1750 itself. Right? This turns out to be equal to uh, 306250 because you can have you can find the square of 175, not a big deal. Minus 66,000. This actually turns out to be 240250. This is the profit. Then barrels, number of barrels produces 170. With this, we have um, arrived at the end of the discussion. I liked St. Kabir paper. Like, I think this is one of the first papers where, you know, something substantial is given. The rest of the papers are nice, cool, but this is, I think, a little bit more interesting. All right. So, thank you, and I will see you next time.